Yeah, like uh, Sarah J, it sounds like your weather is as bipolar as our political leaders. Uh, Sarah J saying, had a little sun today and warmer weather. Can you believe it? 68, back to 30s this weekend, Montana spring. Yeah, North Carolina, they went from like 30 to 80 to back and forth. I mean, it's like watching tennis, uh, but it's on a thermometer. How about you uh, out there in Vegas, uh, Mike? I mean, you got three foot drifts of uh, snow or sand or, no. or the scorpions biting or the Eskimos out or which is it? There are, no scorp- there are no scorpions here that I've ever seen. And I've been told there are none um, to speak of. That occasionally, if you import some uh, rocks for some landscaping, you'll get some in from Arizona, but they really aren't here. And it was sunny and 75 to 77 today. It was absolutely perfect. I, I wore long sweats for Barclay's afternoon walk, but I didn't need them. So perfect here. It's absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, Kukla, look, all I can say is he probably needs a pinch. I uh, Kukla, Kukla, you're totally right. I saw it, but I have not gotten a chance, I don't think, since this morning to really take a break from the computer and so i i didn't even think about it right now i'm just continuing with what i think is an underappreciated shirt believe in yourself oh absolutely you should guys i mean you should believe, believe in yourself so even I if mean, nobody else does yeah it's kind of like joe biden still believes he got 81 million votes right yeah. <laughs> bigfoot believes in himself <laughs> I'm, i have more faith in bigfoot personally I have more faith than in Biden. Wait, 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 you missed. Oh, man. I have a story, actually, that I covered today that is too funny. I'm going to have to pull it up and send it over to you, Pops, because it would be great for Whiskey and Wisdom. Because the the meme coins have been going nuts in crypto. And someone made a meme coin for Joe Biden, and they called it, like, Bo Bo Joden or, or something of that nature. And it goes up now every time that poll numbers come out that Trump's going to beat him. The token <laughs> price goes up every single time that the poll numbers come out. And so, like, today the poll numbers came out that Trump was going to beat him in six states. And so the price went up, like, 30% in the day. Yeah. And in but reality, he's way ahead. He's brewing yeah. with it. Yeah, no, uh, while, yeah, while we're at it, though, uh, people in chat, would you sound off on volume in case any of us need to turn up mm-hmm. or turn down? Just so you guys, because studio can fool us some. Greg, now, funny you would mention this. I'm amazed at how generous Sester is with his knowledge and sharing. Well done, Zach. You rock back to whiskey. Uh, Zach just released a video, and he picked a meme coin, and it's blown up. Uh, so he took a total gamble on one with some of the uh, – your funds can be, I forget how this one works, but yeah, uh, those, those are all me. Those are all me. I don't, I would never, in terms of the community portfolio, that is just XRP, XLM. Those are, those are solid. Predictables. But yeah. He picked mind. one, like, you know, throw it at the, how did you pick it? He's up like 350, 400 bucks on how much? <laughs> I spent, uh, I spent $240 and I'm currently coming in at, Seven hundred and thirty dollars in an hour. Yeah, and so you're like four. Minutes. So in an hour and ten minutes, you're at four hundred ninety bucks. Uh, I, picking I told a meme people coin. In the video that it was gambling and it's luck, but I had a pretty good feeling about the project that I picked, and it it's funny to watch at the moment. And yes, I think that folks are going to see that video and, and <laughs> are going to get a serious laugh because I bought it at the perfect point. While I was actually recording, so I'm <laughs> not certain. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's great, Deborah. You're going to need to ask your question tomorrow while Mister C is on in the morning. Asking it before that or any of those, you're wasting your time. Um, so if you want a logical, thoughtful answer, you will need to ask that question while Mister C is on and live. When he's ready for questions, not before. Wait till he's ready to start taking questions and then ask that question. Hello, Miss Sarah. Yep, Nader's live. I think he's with Pimpy or somebody. Um, are you? Yeah, uh, Zester, you've been so busy today. I haven't been able to t- share all the lovely news. I, one, did you get the box uh, of Riverbend Ranch on your porch? 
Yes, 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 yes. Everything okay. is inside of the freezers. I was still on work calls while I actually. Ran oh no, that's okay. And I would like to point those. out that um, that you probably want to pull out. I picked up some extra manwich sauce, so you probably want to uh, think about that. We'll talk about that after. Oh well, yeah, I'm excited already. Uh, I'm a yeah. sucker for manwich. Uh, but here's the best question. So I got a call this morning at the end of this morning's podcast from the freight company. The I in the mood is now on the island and is to be delivered tomorrow to the doorstep. Um, so are you going to, I don't know what your day's like. I don't know how busy your schedule is, but are you going to be there? We're going to have to film something. And I don't know, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to need somebody I can count on because Mike's already dissed me and said he's not flying down at the last minute. No. It's rough, Mike. No, I'm not. Come I'm not. On. Can you get, can no, you no, get absolutely. I, I will make it happen. And I, that, that's what I thought, Kukla. Uh -huh. I turned it back to where it was. I turned it back to where it was. So this would be the same volume I had going earlier during the live stream. Can, any, can anybody hear me? Can oh, my God. Me? I can yes. hear you. Yeah, you're loud on my end. <laughs> okay. All right, because uh, they asked me to turn my mic up, and I did, and messed things up. Let me <laughs> let me turn it down. Okay, should it should be working? Is it working? Oh, it's working. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're coming through well on my side at least. Good. good. I think they're messing yeah, with us now. I think Q Ball says yeah. you're loud, and then uh, someone else says you're quiet. I, I think they might be playing with us. I think we're being trolled. Yeah, yeah. by our own community. Yeah, in a nice way. <laughs> Try to speak quietly. Hey, look, if if I don't pick on you, I probably don't like you. So unless I've got a clever thing to say in a in a good spirited way, then um, you know, I probably don't know. Oh, wait, now pickles. I go to the orthopedic on Friday morning for my wrist. You know, pickles, it has been difficult. Now, did you type this? Did you make Gabs type this? Who typed this? Are you sitting here hunting and pecking with the other hand? If you don't know, uh, she, well, at some point I'll let her tell the story. Poor Pickles. April Fool's is over. No microphone pranks. <laughs> <laughs> I should have pretended I left it on the floor again. Yeah. Sassy, take care. Thanks for popping in before needing to call it a night. And mods, I totally get it when you need to. Uh, especially on a whiskey and wisdom because I only run it in one screen so I can self moderate some. You're definitely appreciated. It's community and you guys are part of it. But uh, if you ever need to take down time during whiskey and wisdom mods, do not hesitate. Uh, Alley cat. Wait, no, that's it. I want it now. Wait, do you want it? Meow. Can we do like a cat egg and we'll say, I want it. Meow. And we can have like uh, maybe we can like put some eggs and see if we can get Valentino and Penny and every to lay around the eggs. And we're yeah. ready meow. We're ready meow for a golden egg. I'm ready, right meow. Right meow. Right meow. <laughs> okay, guys. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mike. You're Those gonna get. Asked. You're gonna get asked, and we might as well get it completely out of the way right now, early on. Because it's a whiskey and wisdom, but you know you're going to get asked. I'm in favor of circumcision, yes. <laughs> Mark told me I couldn't talk about that. So. <laughs> I did. I don't think that. I don't think that was directly related to the question. Well, that wasn't going to be the question. I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> I appreciate your opinion on the matter. <laughs> All right, sorry. fine. You know, if you want to go down this road, do you prefer your boyfriend to be circumcised or uncircumcised, Mike? No. I was going to ask you your if you had heard anything RV related, but you got to keep it brief and to the point because some people are going to ask. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, my the bond guy that I'm tracking has not been paid, and he expected to be paid Monday. He was not. He has not been paid. I don't know anybody that's been paid on the bond side. Therefore, and I don't know a lot of them. Nothing like you, but that has happened. Um, mm -hmm. we're in the middle of a window where um, the between the first and the twelfth is where I'm hearing it's happened. Right smack in the middle of that is the eighth, which is a um, total solar eclipse. 
And on the tangents of the solar eclipse, about a week to the, you know, a week before and a week after are when you have these very dramatic physical effects. And I'm not calling the RV for that the eighth or for that week, but mm -hmm. I am telling you, I'm telling you the circumstances, the, the emotional, the spiritual, the physical circumstances for pulling the trigger are ideal absolutely ideal on the 8th of april and or right around the 8th of april where the, when the eclipse happens it's the perfect time to do this for a whole variety of reasons and jen got um that there was a there was a signature that needed to be put on a piece of paper at the un by pakistan and that is the last signature before the u.s signs off and that's where we're at so that's all i know um no i i mean the the chatter is through the roof now what the exact day is that it appears to be like right here on the doorstep finally realistically is uh you know the oil contracts revenue going back all that i mean it, it yeah. really is uh interesting but I, I know we need to uh leave that behind and focus on everything else because it's whiskey Honestly, and wisdom i'm just gonna say april 8th that's that's what i think and i will be surprised if it doesn't happen that day the first time i'm gonna oh, keep putting that yeah. comment up yes. everyone it. and so everyone appreciate right. i'm gonna keep putting so, that comment up Kurt, this, that's hilarious where this that came from funny i'm where gonna this, keep putting it up until where this came from. It's hilarious. <laughs> Kurt, it's hilarious all right let's go back to the flight that's stuff um no i've heard of a from? lot of flights getting canceled today a lot of yeah. I don't know what this has to do with the subjects at hand, but I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even know where to go on that one. I, I don't even know where to go on that. All right. So have you been keeping up with some of the expectations and things for uh, uh, for for this event? Um, I shared this one, major events surrounding the April 8th solar eclipse by Craig Reese. Yeah. For more, like and vis visit madmaxworld.tv. Um, but he does like a five, almost a six minute video on it with just some of the major things coming together uh, right. from the comet to the historical relevance, because we saw this happen when a comet went past in the 1800s. We had all yep. kinds of earthquakes and such. Have you been keeping up with some of this? Yeah, I, I have. And there's also a, there was a TikTok video by a woman that I may have somewhere. I, I I can get it again that I played on my show where she correlated th this exact week with the true the true dates of Easter and and the dark the you know the darkness that fell when Christ was crucified and she says she found some book it's like not even a Bible but it's a book a scholarly book from the 1800s and it says that you know I think it's April 1st that Christ goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and tell, or no, he tells everybody he's going to be betrayed. April 3rd is the date of his last teaching that he gives. Mm -hmm. So that would mean something would happen today that would teach us a lesson. And then a couple days later is when he gets, goes to the garden, he's arrested. And the day of the crucifixion would be, I think, April 8th. So then Easter is later that week. So it's like everything points, it correlates. Oh date wise to this exact period these april dates and guess what we're going to have we're going to have a period of darkness um just like we did in the in the biblical story at the same at, during the same part of that date so in other words the calendar is reconstructed exactly as it was during Christ's crucifixion that's what she's saying and i found that fascinating including the darkness spreading across the land so you know, um, it it can't mean nothing. And I wrote a whole book called The Choice about alignments and and eclipses and what they do energetically to human thought, what they do to physical reality, which is change it. It changes the laws of physics. And there's experiments that prove that right. kind of long, long to go into. Oh, but, oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's for my answer with this one. The double the double blind or the double slit theory. Yeah. Or the yeah, double yeah. slit. Oh, yeah, and that one yeah. is absolutely that, ridiculous. That's not really interesting. What's interesting is the paraconical pendulum experiment by Jacques Allais in France in 1952. Oh, it where, is interesting. 
he set out this free swinging pendulum and pendulums will swing with the rotation of the earth. They will rotate. And there's a big setup in a museum somewhere where you can actually watch this pendulum over days, days. change its position, right? And go with the rotation of the earth. But during the eclipse of Paris in 52, it actually not only started accelerating very rapidly, going much faster, it went against the rotation of the earth. And there is nothing in conventional physics that can explain that phenomenon. It was repeated in 1956. And guess what? Guess what, Mark? NASA decided they were going to test the LA effect in 1999. They, they put a guy named Dr. David Noever in charge of the project, and they set up pendulums in, I think, 33 locations all over the globe to test any effects mm -hmm. that might happen during a total solar eclipse in 99. And you know what happened? You know what the results were? What? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. No ever quit NASA, took all the data with him, and went and started his own company. <laughs> with just experimenting in advanced propulsion systems for space travel. So wow. nobody Maybe he knows. learned something. No. Um, anyway. Weird stuff. Yes, CERN cranking up and yep. uh, trying to find that magical matter oh. that rules everything in and the NASA, universe. NASA is launching rockets into the eclipse during the eclipse. Yeah, three, three sounding rockets. Do you know what the name of that project is, Mark? It's called what? Operation. I'm going to tell you. It's Go ahead. No, I know. Operation, Operation Serpent Deity. Lizard God. Lizard people. Yeah, and there's like three different names for all of these, and all of them have to do with some type of apocalyptic lizard or whatever. Like all of them. It, it's Moloch. It's the reptilians. It's the whole the whole thing. That's what they're honoring with this. That's what they're calling this experiment. So I think something weird's going to go on. We may have to like look for it in the news, but something weird's going to happen. Yeah, uh, maybe we should uh, broadcast live during the eclipse That's on the. Idea. Idea. That's a great idea. What is it, Monday? What time mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. what time yeah, is what it? time is totality? I want to say it's relatively late, like five o'clock or something. Um, yeah, one of you guys, one of you brilliant fellas doing a research. Um, all right, uh, Miss Sarah, I have the picture. The question is, am I allowed to show the picture or not? That is the question, or whether you would rather us not show off uh you modeling the uh the shirt for uh oh, no. for us. Show, show us the picture because you know she could be she needs to be my new model for my my ladies tank tops that i sell you know of course they're real with the ufo on it <laughs> i love that great idea let's see missouri is supposed to be around 2 p.m sure i don't care all right guys uh -huh. this right. is and now Kukla has made a few alterations and cleaned up a little bit of stuff on the shirt. So if you've got like an older version, they're similar, they're close, but Miss Kukla has really been at it, doing a top-notch job. Here is Miss mm -hmm. and Miss and Miss Sarah does already have a man. I just want to point that out, guys. Just behave. <laughs> nice. Whiskey and wisdom. Yeah, no, Sarah, I'm actually, I'm actually not kidding, Sarah, because I have this, I have these tank tops that I that I'm gonna sell. I'm trying to get the Wi Fi store to sell them, which says, of course, they're real and it's a flying saucer, but it's a lady's tank top, so it goes right where your boobs are, right? I've sold Mark, I've sold some of them, but my model went, went nuts on me. My model went absolutely Dude, crazy on me. Do you want me to talk to Dave and get him to uh, do it no, again? I'm not. Know. So Sarah, I am looking for a new model. Contact me somehow on some social media. <laughs> I'm looking for a new model for those tank tops. They're not revealing. They're not spaghetti strap, but they're, you know, they're feminine. Let's put it that way. Zester, are you reading the comments? I am. I was actually about to uh, post a link for everyone that might have been interested about the double slit experiment. So uh, oh. that that is about to pop out. From ah. uh, from you, since uh, apparently yeah, I see, 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 you. Yeah. But for those that are interested and do want to learn about that one, it is extremely, extremely interesting. Oh, it is so interesting. It that's is a, that's a string theory question that is essentially still unanswered in terms of physics. There, there remains to this day no actual answer to why atoms and particles actually end up acting the way that they do once they are fired at a specific point. And so that was the easiest article I could find 
in terms of explaining it. And it, it actually does a really good job. Yeah, I'm dropping that into chat for you guys. Um, but in a nutshell, the way they behave changes if you are observing them yeah. as opposed to if you're not that, observing them. So if they you know, are not watching the charged particle fly, it acts different than if someone is watching it. Explain that from any physics standpoint. Explain that from any standpoint of modern it, science. It does it, not add up. Modern is like, science is flawed based off of a singular experiment, the double slit experiment. Because if we watch, the results change. If we don't watch, the results are predictable. It is absurd. Okay. It's like we have an, I, I, my theory, we have an underlying set of universal laws. But that there is a trump card in that one. Um, or a joker card or whatever you want to call it. And I call that the God card because we're in his image. We have the ability to change an effect. And the Bible even talks about that. You know, you've seen books written, the secret, you know, will it into existence? Um, your, you know, your thoughts, your intentions, all those things matter. And science proves that it matters. Yeah. I uh, wrote a book about this 14 years ago. <laughs> Called the choice by Mike Barra, um, except that the double slit experiment. Here's the thing: How do you know what the particle is doing if you're not looking at it? Well, that sounds like a shred. Not a type situation. Yeah, like, how do they know what it's doing? It's um, it, but yeah, Mark. There's this over uh, underline or over not underline because it's not beneath us; it's above us. This substrate of Physical reality. I used to call it the ether. Wait, why don't you call it the firmament? No, I'm just messing with you. Through which everything travels, including your thoughts and hopes and all that, and travels faster than light. So you can have instantaneous yep. action at a distance. I, I mean, uh, Tesla talked about it. He called it ether. He called this magical particle we don't see that seems to rule things. And the more science that gets done, the more accurate he appears, um, even if somewhat Oh, all right. Here, I got another question that that that's occurred to me. Um, well, sometimes, well, often, and I've been wanting to ask this to Mike, and then I always forget because I think about it late at night while I'm watching, uh, you know, Mike on television on Ancient Aliens. For those that haven't checked it out, uh, yeah, it's a, a shameless plug for uh, Mike Barr. There, guys. One of the flaws in the logic of archaeology in general, every time they dig up a site of antiquity, whether that's in Turkey, whether that's in Peru or wherever in the world, they always assume, well, it must have had some religious uh, meaning. Oh, it had to have been a temple. Oh, they built this for whatever. They could have built a boxing ring. That, yeah. That, but, but everybody, every archaeologist out there, oh, this is an ancient temple. Is this just like the go-to kind of like ancient aliens? Oh, it's an alien. Aliens built the pyramids, right? Because people couldn't have done it. Well, what if because we needed a temple? Back? What if people were smarter back then? Oh yeah, it's a tomb. The, the the pyramids are a tomb. Oh yeah, sure. Even though we never found a body in the tomb, but okay, right, got it. Um, yeah, Mark, and you know, it's like it's also like NASA's thing. Um, do I sniff my models? Well, I don't. I don't expect <laughs> that wasn't to be me. In the same, the same room with them. But, <laughs> It wasn't me that clicked that link. No, the previous model. <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't click that link, so it had to be you. <laughs> the previous model that I fired, I have sniffed. Yes, I will. I will say that, but I, that is not a requirement for the job, Sarah. Mm. Uh, okay, so um, you know, like NASA bases the age of everything when they look at the planets and stuff on crater counts, right? But I think I can prove beyond any reasonable person's doubt that there are planets in the solar system that exploded. So the, the theory is that a long time ago, there was a lot more junk in the solar system. So that's when all the craters happened, right? And impact things kept bumping into each other, right? And so we can count and we can go, oh, there's way more craters clustered here on Mars. So therefore Mars must be 4.325 billion years ago, years old when there was this many, you know, this many asteroids out there. But if Mars was orbiting a planet that exploded, then that becomes meaningless. And so we do, and we do have, and we do have an asteroid trail that shows that we lost a planet at some point. We have the gravitational wells to support that we're missing a planet. 
exactly two actually at least i think so so the thing is mark is that it's the same principle in that you're using a series of assumptions that are not that are not valid therefore your entire theorem is invalid so you got to start from scratch because you don't know who built the pyramids you don't know why they built them we don't have any idea we can guess at it and that's about it it's, yeah, it's kind of like the asshole that says all women have a problem and that's why they haven't found the right one. And it could just be that person or vice versa. You know, sometimes our logic uh, process is flawed. So that's kind of like my take. I was like, why does it always have to be a temple? Oh, it must have been a religious site. Uh, why? Do we just assume anybody older than us couldn't think for themselves? They needed religion to explain things or why do we have to assume that if you believe in something spiritual or religious that you have to be ignorant and dumb and behind? So right. we just assume anybody in antiquity was, well, they weren't very bright. So everything they built had to be a temple to worship something. Yeah. And, you know, most of them, actually, if you look at like Gobekli Tepe and stuff, those those things, they're they're all based on astronomical observations and alignments. So they were they were fascinated by the stars. Now, you could say that that's a worship of the stars or worshiping God through the stars. But you don't know that. You don't have their books. You don't have their holy books. Maybe they're in the Vatican archives somewhere. But you don't know that. So you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, this would be a fun one, Gary. I do. I have recently come. And uh, Miss Linda, you guys uh, know where she joins on occasion. She sent me a book on the Tartarian Empire. Uh, it's laying beside the bed in North Carolina. And whenever I'm, you know, it's, it's my nighttime reading for 30 minutes or whatever before I fall asleep. But it is fascinating. And the concepts, I don't know how much it how much it was a cohesive society as it was a technological time where people understood similar construction and architecture and and maybe belief structures uh, of a you know, I don't know. My my no. mind's not made up. I look at Tartaria, I look on the maps, I look at the Tartaria that is explained to be part of California, where it still shows California as an island. I mean, there is some fascinating uh I mean the CIA probably the thing that gives me the most credence to it being a real thing is the CIA discussing an internal documentation documentation documents that they needed to erase Tartaria from history that they were taking an active role to remove discussions yeah, of it. Yeah, they like plucked 400 years out of human history, I think is the general theory, right? That's, That's probably the years. best argument I've seen so far for it. I mean, you know, throw all the maps away, throw all the similar well, architecture that goes way back and there's no explanation for it. Throw right. all that away. It's the CIA documentation that they're trying to bury the existence of it that makes me think, that there's yeah, a good yeah. chance that it very much existed. Well, and it's like the lady that found that did the TikTok video. She found this old, old book, old academic book talking about the dates of of the crucifixion, and it all aligns with the current date this week, next week, and the eclipse. So yeah, you know, it's pretty it's pretty fascinating stuff that that there's a lot of lost knowledge. It's maybe sitting out there in books on shelves or or in an old museums somewhere that uh you know, that has the truth in it. Like, like you get a completely different view of the law if you read a 1933 Black's Law Dictionary than if you read a current Black's Law Dictionary. Yeah, this like, is true. What's the definition we change of it. money? What's the definition of money and corporation and things like that? It's pretty interesting stuff. Oh, you mean like the definition of a vaccine, how it's changed? Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I couldn't resist. I had to throw it in there. All right, Zester, what do you think? The Tartarian thing. Yeah. Um, well, well uh, of course, but what we do need to keep in mind is that the entire name Tartarian comes from the Tartars. The Tartars were a nomadic, horse-based people that were endemic to the Caucasus Mountains and to other areas inside of what would be considered to be modern-day Russia and yeah. the Mongolian region. And so we know that the Tartarians were a horse-based and nomadic people. And we also know that the major, major continuation of the Eastern Orthodox Church, which would be the Byzantines, the Eastern Roman Empire, identified as an entirely unique group of people. 
they also happen to be the main employers of Tartarian mercenaries throughout the entire, uh, essentially from the fall of Rome to the 13th century. The Roman Empire continued. The Roman Empire existed for longer than any empire on the planet if you consider the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Europe. Empire. And if you consider Eastern Orthodox architecture, then you have an explanation for the entire conspiracy and the entire mm -hmm. conspiracy is completely flawed and absolutely has zero ground because yeah. it is not a matter of it being Tartarian. It is Eastern Orthodoxy. It is the Roman Empire. That's the reason there was a nation and there were a group of people that were still capable of building things at a level that was far beyond the Dark Ages. The Byzantines lasted, the Byzantines were the Romans. And they lasted for a thousand plus years after what we technically say the Western the fall of Rome. Empire fell. The fall yeah. of Rome was not the fall of Rome. And that is the explanation. There is no Tartarian conspiracy if you follow that logic stream. If you follow that logic stream, it is an Eastern, or Eastern Orthodoxy architecture. It is Eastern Orthodoxy teachings and books and, and literature and if we were to look at it and say what was the destruction of all of this knowledge it would be the destruction of the knowledge in constantinople which is today istanbul and so that destruction of everything that was tartarian history occurred in our history books it was the destruction of all of the roman knowledge in history that had been saved inside of Constantinople, which is modern-day Istanbul in Turkey on the Anatolian Peninsula. And it is absolutely explains the entire conspiracy. The entire conspiracy is gone. And literally one explanation, the whole thing disappears. The buildings are Eastern Orthodox. The reason we see Eastern Orthodox buildings in New York is why? We had people fleeing the Ottoman Empire to the United States during World War I. They built the buildings. They took the same architecture. Right, this this is a Wi-Fi. The story. Ottoman Empire. And the whole explanation is just done. Like, the whole thing makes zero sense in my mind because of a historical explanation. It's Eastern Orthodoxy. It's the church. That is the reason that they had that architecture. The reason that they are known as Tartarians is because they were a nomadic people. And I mean, even the word barbarian, why why is the word barbarian in the English language? I actually I'll throw that one at, at Mike and at Mike and Pops. What why is barbarian a word? Why why is I don't know, barbarian, Tartarian? I don't know. It sounds like a rhyme to me. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm actually curious here. Did we just need to describe anybody we disagreed with? I have the answer. The reason that barbarian is a word is because the Romans called anyone that didn't speak Latin barbars because their language made no sense. Bar, 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 bar. Their language literally didn't make sense. And so they called them barbarians. That's Wait, why you're racist, man. It's so easy. It's like, bam, explanation. That's it. They're racist. I'm done. <laughs> that, that is what Romans said. That's the reason barbarian exists as a word. It is because of barbar. -bar. It you can look this one up, guys. I promise you, you can go through and listen to Pliny the Elder in ancient Rome explain to you where the term barbarian came from. You can listen to the Romans ooh, explain ooh. where that term originated from yeah here's another one what what we have rachel so we have sarah's sister in the house it's good to see you in here rachel um barbary uh the barbary marauders uh that was that was a fun one on the whole like pirate thing but we already talked about that one um what have you seen fun to discuss this week mike oh well, your I shirt gonna show, i was gonna show sarah oh, the shirt, shirt. <laughs> and the previous model. Now we're going to fix it so that the flying saucer comes all the way to the top. So the word, of course, is above and their reel is below. And yeah, there's another shot of it. Let's try to get Blair's face out of there since she scares me. Uh, of course, they're real. That's the shirt, Sarah. So uh, just letting you know, looking for a model. Willing Did the to make uh, quilts? Kilts. I mean, kilts. Oh, 
I'm going to run with quilts. I mean, kilts. I don't know. I, I, I want a quilt. <laughs> Nobody? All right. No. Uh, let's uh, see. I think that one is a, is a truth all around, though. Cassie S. says, our history is a lie. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely Cassie. is a lie. Well, remember, yeah. the winners write the history, except after the Reagan administration when we allowed the losers to write the history after the Democrats got creamed. <laughs> hey, look, I've seen some uh, serious manipulation of history by people on the right, too. Um, is it far worse on the left, at least recently? Absolutely. It is rough um, as they try to change history to support their narrative. Yeah, like, for instance, a bunch of Republicans switch parties to a bunch of guy, uh, Democrats switch, you know, switch parties to become Republicans to be devoted against the civil rights bill. There was only one, actually. Strom Thurmond was the only one. And he objected to it along constitutional principles, not because he didn't like black people. Hmm. There's a lot of uh, history that needs to be fixed. Oh, we have yeah. tons. We have absolutely tons. I mean, uh, I, yeah, I, I threw that one out at people the other night, Pops. The first ever self-made female millionaire in the United States. Yeah. Hey. Another, another, uh, another one for everyone to go uh, to go find out and be amazed by the answer. You think that that um, means I was a barbar bear? Barbarian in a previous life. Oh God, that's uh, yeah, no, I, I kind of liked where you're thinking there. So I like am, that, I am I mean, that was part of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans came up into Hungary back in the old days. So, so I mean, yeah, I think that's a new thing. A, a barbarian that can be like uh, we're gonna need. Like, all right, a turn bar around. Bar all right, I I'm gonna move you over here because I'm gonna need to highlight you here by yourself. Can we change the Battle of Braun to the Battle of Barbarian? Yeah. Kirk versus the Gorn. There we go. Kirk, the reptilian god, uh, the serpent deity, and Captain Kirk, the essence of masculine humanity. There we are. Masculine humanity versus reptilian. I don't know. All right. There we go. Stargate 3045.6. Who will reign supreme? <laughs> Might barbarian. So whenever you're being toxically masculine, we can say, oh, the barbarian is in. Yes. The barbarian has popped out once again. Yes. We had a minister in Hawaii who wore a kilt. Wow. Okay. Hey, now, like Bar the whole yeah, Greek is. word thing. I mean, Kukla, were you here when uh, we were talking about uh, the... The sea people and the migration and the things that took place in the Mediterranean area and how like pretty much everything in the Mediterranean has a Greek name. We believe that oh, that all also makes, makes makes a lot of sense when we, when you consider what we do actually physically know about Greek trade and, and Greek enterprise. I mean, look at um Messenia, I mean, which would be in modern day France which is absolutely obviously a greek nation they the the buildings the everything it's 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 the greeks the greeks are essentially the evolution of everything that is modern europe if we were to look through it and consider that the romans were just idealizing the greeks that's all they did i mean the the romans the romans both diminished the greeks and at the same time absolutely mimicked them in everything yeah. they did. You know, they had to loathe themselves because they mimicked the Greeks, but they hated the Greeks, but they mimicked the Greeks. Well, they, they loved That's like a self-loathing thing. That's kind of like the left Greek. right now. They loved certain parts of what was being Greek. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, I question whether that wasn't kind of the, the fall of an empire. And really what Rome was idealizing was the fact that the Greeks were capable of acting in a way they did because they were an empire that was untouchable and was on the decline. If we were to look at that in the same way, we could take the modern America and the modern American empire and we could compare it directly to the ancient Greek empire in terms of how they were acting. 
and yeah. the Romans idealized them because they lived in a world where they did not have anything to worry about besides things that didn't matter. And, and so literally the Greeks uh, of ancient Athens and of ancient Rome, uh, the, the, the Greeks of the ancient Alexandrian Empire, they had nothing to worry about. They lived in a world that was essentially the top of an empire. And so the Romans idealized that because it was what they wanted to achieve. They wanted to be Greeks. Greeks were the epitome of control, of power, of dominance. And the things that the Greeks chose to do once they had all that power was essentially a lot of deviance. They spent they spent a lot of time sitting around thinking too. And so the Romans invaded and said, hey, what do you think of that? Anyway. <clears throat> I want to sit around and just think and deep think and pontificate. I grew up at the wrong time. See, I grew up at the tail end of a civilization, um, which means I either have to help be the phoenix and resurrect it or just observe the decline. Uh, for anyone that is curious about my little comment on the first ever self-made female millionaire, I am going to go ahead and pop it in. Was it uh, Aunt Jemima? She, Madam C.J. Walker, she invented the idea of makeup for Caucasian women. She was the child of a slave. She is the first ever self-made millionaire in the United States of America. And she is the absolute best, best example of why our, our education system is failing. Oh, because God. we're not learning about the fact that she is not just an amazing woman but a woman that absolutely changed the world and oh. no one knows about her because of something awful. Well, they don't want you to know about her because they don't want you to know that a slave could become a millionaire in America a uh, hundred years ago. They don't want you to believe that. They want you to think we're a bunch of white racist, evil people. Like, you know, slavery was only 1.5% 1, 1. of the population of the U S owned slaves. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's still not it's still not okay guys we're not we're not in any way trying to yeah, say yeah. that it was okay no way period but uh, it's but it's like not it what it's been made out to be in the history books at all no and it, it is it's genuinely that that in and of itself is one of the major faults that i would throw at at the education system is that we don't universally educate we don't actually give everyone all the history and then let them make their own decision. And that's probably why we have a world where we have folks that are so delusional is because they've only been fed a portion of history that, that fit the narrative. What really we need to do is we need to give everyone the whole history and we need to say it's awful. It's all awful. History is awful. Um, and deal with it. No, yeah, no, I, I think we should. The, the, the worst history is the more we need to study it so we don't make the same mistakes. Mankind seems to have historically a very short memory because we have so much history to tell us exactly what we're facing and we just ignore it in some kind of a yeah, mankind or humankind or a bunch of ostriches. Uh, um, Greg, I can't resist. Greg, I have to. And thank you for putting it in there. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Uh, yeah, um, all right. Um, Unless you yeah. have watched one of my favorite television shows with some of the most clever writers in history, that made no sense to you. Um, Sarah, I'm try I, I tried to post a couple of my social medias, but they didn't go. The comments didn't go through for some. Oh reason. no, 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 no! Because all, all the links are blocked. Uh, oh, so you just said I just posted. I just posted the. Um, the Autobot may have removed them. If if you're worried about it, you want me to post them. Put them in the um, our private chat for people in the uh, studio, and I will copy paste and bring it over. Okay, I don't I don't know what she's on, so it's hard for me to like I don't know what she might be on. So yeah, here I'll give you that Instagram, and then I'm just plain old Mike Vera on Facebook. Be careful, there's a uh, Michael Herbert Barra, that's my backup account. I almost never go there. So, and I never go to my yeah. author page. So, just, you know, contact me through the messenger or one of those and oh, we'll get your address. Yeah. And I'll send you, I'll send you one of the tanks. And uh, you know. Whip, Whip has figured out what's going on there, Mike. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh, I'm going to have to ban you for my Telegram channel. I'm going to turn you <laughs> I was going to click on that one. Also. Oh, God. If you have, I tell you, man, uh, I don't know, Mike, if you've ever, like, during a podcast, gone over to the Rumble chat room and listened to Whip and Booger go at it and pick at each other. No. If no. you ever, anybody having a bad day, just go and sit during a podcast. Don't pay any attention to what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, until I get up with a, you know, with a golden egg and like you know, show off a, you know, a cool shirt like this one. Until until I do that, just ignore it and just go there when you need a mental break and let listen to Whip and Booger go at each other. It is, oh my God, it's a hoot. It is a hoot. Oh wait, Quester said he saw it, so it posted. Okay, I'm well, gonna it's, try it's, to find it. Oh, you already put it over here. So let's yeah, see. I put it over in the private chat. So. Um, I'm just Mike Barra, all lowercase, M-I-K-E-B-A-R-A-333 on Instagram. You can message me there or just Mike Barra on Facebook. Not Mike Barra author and not Michael Herbert Barra, but just Mike Barra uh, on Facebook. Facebook Messenger is probably the most efficient way. And I'll, yeah, just send me, just send me your mailing address and I'll, I'll send you one of the tanks. I, I'm almost out of mediums. I have mediums and larges. And I think I'm almost out of mediums. Oh, I hate to hear Booger hurt his back. Was he working on the tractor? He and I have talked about that entirely too many times of late. Occasionally, uh, it is uh, fun to sit and carry on a late conversation. Carry, occasionally, rare rare occasion, probably not often enough, Booger will call me after the evening wraps up. and It's become some of my favorite times. He is a hoot. A hoot. Yes, I see you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sarah, I understand that you're everywhere, but um, you know how many Sarah Newmans there are on like Instagram? There's probably a few. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with some of these. Holy crap, tonight is just flying by. So has anything happened fun in the world? I mean, on the bingo card of insanity, um, you know. What have we looked at this week? We've looked at World War III. We've stared at down the um, nuclear uh, missile silo. Right. Um, we've uh, seen the Federal Reserve admit to losing 100 and some billion. We've seen the Swedish National Bank uh, beg the government to bail them out. We've seen the Swiss National Bank uh, post uh, uh, another lot. What the heck else are we going to see this week? I'm kind of afraid to ask. It's kind of like, you know, uh, Betting, uh, doubling down with the devil or something? Earthquakes, hurricanes are potential physical changes we're going to see. They're not going to be huge, but, you know, remember there was a total solar eclipse that took place right through the middle of the U.S. in 2017. And the day after, three hurricanes formed in the Caribbean at 19.5 degrees and devastated Puerto Rico. So, Wait, wait, wait. Say that one again. Well, in 2017... Um, in 2017, after the total solar eclipse went through the U.S., basically split it in half. Mm -hmm. and then today, three hurricanes formed at the 19.5 degree latitude, which if you read the Choice or Dark Mission, you understand why that's significant. And they were super intense, and that's what hit Puerto Rico and devastated it. So, Are you talking about Maria? Yeah. Yeah, there were three hurricanes. There were three hurricanes. Mm -hmm. All right, this one is, uh, that is, let's see. Ooh, Brit, sorry to see that one. I am reading a couple of these. Uh, watching tornadoes, I'm seeing like eviction. I'm seeing like all kinds of, all right, man, the world's going to heck. What, what, what can we do this week to make it better? How about an RV? Let's do that. Let's, let's change the What's everyone there. drinking? Ah. <sighs> Man, yeah, yeah, nobody answered that question throughout the whole night. I feel like that, uh, you know, that that's supposed to be one of the first ones. Uh, Mike showed off, I think, a bottle of Crown or something. I'm like, yeah, you're drinking Medaya. I, I am predictable. Crown. Yep, Crown, Jim, and Medaya. All right. And I have my uh, totally unsolicited advertisement here for my Zulu as I drink my pH corrected water. Thanks, Wade. 
<laughs> Remember the night you were drinking Matt's uh, Matt's um, seltzer water, his CBD seltzer water. I remember you were drinking out, and you just got more and more, more relaxed. Like <laughs> that was took it only took an hour. And you're just like, well, anybody have any thoughts on anything else? Yeah, <laughs> I want pizza. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, now I want pizza. That was funny as funny as hell. <laughs> Uh, Kukla, just make certain when you were doing water while you're fasting for Orthodox Easter that you don't drink Matt's water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's a big difference. But also, I mean, if we go back to the biblical text, they did make a lot of references to to a to an herb named cannabis that was getting added to a lot of different things. So it, it might be. Uh, it, it might actually make it more historically or, or biblically correct, but there, there's a lot of confusion there. I, I actually did a little bit of research on that one recently, and uh, it, it led to some some interesting, interesting both myths and, and also provable facts in terms of the usage uh, of such herbs in, in early Christianity. So for me, it's interesting because I have a, uh, I've got a friend I met through Zach, through Zach Schwartz. Um, Zach, yeah, you, you met him, but uh, a, a rabbi. Um, and he broke down that history uh, because uh, Zach, very typical Republican, not you, the other one, you know, everything bad, bad, whatever. And he said, well, I hate to correct you, but it's one of the only plants specifically named in the Bible that God gave mankind. And it's used in all of our ancient recipes for anointing oil. And his mind was just like, Pow. everything I thought about it being this evil slash whatever. And it's quite literally in the Bible mm -hmm. with many of its benefits. And it really did. It, it, it kind of shook his reefer madness world. All right, total sideline there. Let's uh, let's get back to it. Uh, Conspiratory. I kind of like this. The name of the podcast for Whip and Booger. I should do that one time. I should rename just on Rumble. You know, coffee with Whip and Booger, just for fun, and see if they notice. Oh wait, Whip's here. Dead gone it. I should have just done it. Oh, wait, Tyler, let's see. Original Mark Z, was at the in-laws over the weekend and walked back into the house to them having their own red pill conversation. Stood in the doorway and applauded them. Isn't that great? <laughs> Watching them wake up. Uh, Kukla, why not Matt's water? Because you'll end up very relaxed and you won't be able to fast. You'll be eating. Yeah, you'll be eating Doritos and pizza. You'll be calling like, up while you're stuffing Doritos in your face. Just broke my fast. <sighs> well... Fun while it lasted. Fun while it lasted. All right, Biggie Lee. That's just a time travel. That's why he is not aged. Ah, I, uh, I, I hope so. I uh, just an old soul. Zach, you want to impress me, man? Grow a beard. That's what I, I want. I easily beard. can. I easily can. I just hate it. You I hate like it. A, you look. You look like a newborn babe. We're gonna. We're gonna need proof. I mean, yeah, if I, I have to, then I will. I say, okay, I say, I say right. we take some kind of, like, set up some kind of good family done. donation for charity where everybody kicks in a certain amount of dollars, and uh, uh, we commit to, if we get to this point, he keeps it for a week. If he gets this point, two weeks, three weeks. And then we give it to a good cause. Yeah, Just I don't know. I think I'm going to get bribed along the way on that. That or it needs to be a really good cause. For a really good cause, I will suffer. But... A genuinely, oh man, it drives me nuts. But for a good cause, I, I will suffer as long as necessary. I know that it really only takes about a week, and then uh, and then uh, I'm I'm not I'm not close to 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 Mike and Pops here, but I definitely can't hide it at that point. I, I'm pretty full bearded at a week without shaving. Sure. Yes. So what is that eclipse oh. supposed to be? Zester, uh, David, actually, that video has already dropped. Already dropped. And um, uh, I'm, I'm not doing too bad on my meme token purchase. So 
if you do want that link, I uh, I can go ahead and actually drop that one real. You don't have quick. to send it to me. You can drop it directly because yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna go over there and do that one real fast, just in case anyone does want to see that video because I did. I released three videos and did a live stream today, Mark. And, I mean, Mike, and I'm here. So my my evening has been ridiculous. Three videos dropped and and a live stream. Guys, I wish the microphone would reach to the cat. She is laid out between my mouse and my keyboard snoring. Uh, Sean, I love that idea. I say we create a fundraiser and we get a uh, zester to keep the beard and We'll set up parameters and the funds would go to the Anti-Trafficking Bureau, who we recently helped, guys, and they got a bunch of special needs kids out of Haiti, which was uh, pretty cool. Uh, there you go. You know, just wants the fundraiser for, for all the poor kitties in the oh. world. I don't know if you saw Pops. Uh, Valentino became a homeowner today. Yeah, I saw that. I, well, well, I mean, I, did, I didn't know he'd become a homeowner, homeowner, but I saw him in that in in that collapse that the little cubby hole thing. Yep, he's a proud homeowner now. So, you know, he's getting all kinds of hoity-toity about things. He's feeling fancy. Fancy. Wait, fancy like Applebee's? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what has more lives than a cat? A frog. It croaks every day. That's that's a bad dad joke. That's a really bad dad it's, joke. I love dad jokes, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do they say about a cow that won't give milk? I don't know what. It's an utter failure. <laughs> no. Yeah. Tino's what offended by that one. Yeah. What do you call a cow with no <laughs> legs? Ground beef. Yeah. What do you call Maybe? a guy? What do you call a guy swimming with no arms and no legs, Bob? You know. Valentino is going to go ahead and give you his thoughts on these jokes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all right, right there is exactly yeah. what he's thinking. So it's my my uh, thinking, thing. With, no, not nope. funny. Uh, I've not <laughs> not seen. Wait, see the see the aliens telling dad jokes on YouTube? No, but I think I would like to see that. Uh, kind of like the fun thing I do with uh, my niece Lauren. Uh, one of my nieces is we tell bad dad jokes. So whenever we see each other, we share another bad dad joke. Yes, we did that one time. We did we did leper jokes. Remember, we did the leper jokes. You know, did you hear about the leper hockey games, Esther? There was a face. Oh, no, I have not heard about that one. There was a leper hockey game. There they, there was a face off in the corner. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> there's a couple others, but I can't tell them to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We better pay attention to Valentino after that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually, I, I think somebody his I think, see what his thought on the joke was. I think Greg Landry <laughs> makes an excellent point. I think you may be feeding Valentino some of those CBD guru treats. Yeah, there you go. There you go. No, I he has never, and I I don't trust him with anything, and so I I've never given him any. He's never tried catnip. He's never even tried the CBD gurus treats. He's uh he's living the very very clean life. He doesn't even drink the water around here. He's fancier no. than me. Yep, he's fancier than Applebee's. I love it. I love this one. Baja Girl, this is one I have never... I just saw a couple of dad jokes I've not seen. Baja Girls, where do fish go on vacation? Finland. Land. I like that one. Uh, let's see, there was another one. Uh, Tyler said, did, where did do dads keep their, their jokes? A data base. All right, go ahead, Mike. Well, did you hear about did you hear about the the website for the, the dirty website for fish you know the, the dirty site for fish it's called only fins 
I got to remember that one. Only fence. Um, all right. <laughs> one in ten. Oh my goodness! Just ordered stuffed cat for Isabella. It's her daughter. Isabella's her daughter. It came today. It looks just like Zester's cat. She named it him Charlie. Stuffed a cat. You know, Sarah. There is uh There are two websites. One called Petsies, and one called Cuddle Clones. That actually will make you a stuffed animal of of your pet. And here, let me show you. I'll go. I'll go grab it. I got one. Uh, hang on. And what's Forrest <laughs> Gump's pa password? One Forrest one. Oh, that's great. Where do you find a cow with no legs? Wherever you left it. Yeah, what do you call Mike Tyson with no arms and no legs? Whatever you want. Anybody remember that? All right, that joke's back from the 90s. So Y'all messed they, up. They will make a, plush, a plushie of your pet. This is my kitty Aurora that passed away. About passed away. Ago. And it's absolutely perfect. It's got the two different colored eyes, the nose, the mouth, uh, all of her spots and a black tail. So, you know, if if you have a kid that's grieving, this kind of thing, it's expensive. It's like 250 bucks. Mm. But it's weird because it it's like it feels like she's still around. I have her, you know, up on my uh, up on my dresser. So the they're wonderful things. And it, one is called Petsies. And the other is called Cuddle Clones. And they do, everything is custom and it's really cool. So, um, you know, if you have a pet that's passed away or you have a little kid that's having a hard time missing their dog or their kitty, just you can have one of those made. And it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. So, well, the question yeah. is, is if I get like one of those made of Penny, uh, yeah. will it, can I just lay it on my keyboard so it'll remind me of her? Yes, yes. I would, you could actually send a picture of her laying on the keyboard. See, they they will take a pose like this pose they took is actually a picture of Aurora that I sent them, and they they made her up in that particular uh -huh. pose. So, all right, this is sounding like a really, really, really bad take of uh, what was that uh, movie with the crazy guy with the hotel had the house above it, and his mother was like sitting in a rocking chair, pretty much just stuffed for years. Oh, come on. Famous horror thing. Is that the Bates house? Yeah, that's the Bates house. Whatever oh, that okay. yeah, that's right. Okay. Something yeah. like that. I'm, I don't like horror movies, though. I, I, I really don't. I don't watch them. But I, I seem to remember hearing... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was thinking the Bates Motel. Oh, wait. That is not correct. No, no, no. They did They did a spinoff on one of the uh, streaming services, called, I think, called the Bates Hotel or whatever, Bates Motel okay. or something like that. It was a spinoff from the movie Psycho, and it was oh, really okay. good. Right. It had yeah, that, yeah, it had that, that yeah, kind I've of. Never even watched it. <laughs> it had the the actor, the young guy. He's also in some kind of doctor TV show now, where he's like, you know, got a great, great actor, great actor. Who Anthony the Psycho star? Anthony? Uh, no, no, no. Of the remake of Psycho, the TV oh, series oh, that they remade. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, a lot of and women do like horror movies. My ex-wife used to watch horror movies all the time because it's like she felt that she could control the scare because she could turn it off, you know, if she wanted to. So. Yep, no. All right. Uh, I noticed the time, and the mods are going to need to get some sleep. So as I look around the cat to try to see the screen, um, anything you guys want to mention in closing? Well, I, you know, I'm going to say what I said at the top. I'm not going to say the RV is going to happen on the 8th or that week, but I'm going to tell you it's the perfect time, perfect opportunity to do so. And all I hear from my side of things is that everything is signed off pretty much. So maybe it'll be a really exciting <laughs> show on Tuesday, or maybe we'll all be under, under NDAs and we won't be able to do a show on Tuesday, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I think oh my we're God. Right, right for opportunity. Uh, you know, I I was trying to click that one at the same time you were clicking it there. <laughs> I think we were I mean, literally yeah. clicking at the same time, Bob. I'm like, nope, I want that one. <laughs> right. And we're we're gonna leave that question with with Mike Barra and Pops, and then we're gonna go ahead and close it for the evening. And so, anyone that is interested in learning about whether either of them are interested in furries, you're gonna have to tune in to Whiskey and Wisdom next weekend. <laughs> 
next Tuesday or Wednesday, next Wednesday. <laughs> and, but God knows, I hope we're under an NDA and I am forced to take a uh, serious break. I think we should all pull for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll all meet together here in Vegas once we can talk about it. We'll have a big party. So that's mm-hmm. the plan. Yeah, but how's that even going to know what we've talked about? Because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's right. So only the people who come will actually know what happens. Mm-hmm. That checks out. All right. Uh, I, I suppose I should say for anyone who does have anything more uh, in the tank in terms of energy, if you are interested, I do have three separate videos that just launched today. They're all uh, essentially in a series for anyone who might be interested in the insanity that's going on in the crypto markets, especially on the Solana blockchain. So those videos are out there for anyone who does want to check them out. I suppose I'm supposed to do that. Uh, and that, and that what you're supposed to do if you put out a bunch of videos in a day. Um, yeah, no, I love this one. The taxidermy animals. This is like, that's the only weird. house I've ever owned that doesn't have a taxidermy animal in it right now. Weird. The only one. Okay. That's weird. Sir. Um, the only one. Now, now I did see this one and I can't resist uh put this one up. Mike, Mike, what is the best ancient aliens episode I should go watch right anyone, now? Anyone best anyone one with me in it. All right. Specifically, your best um, one. What season, what episode? One from 2019, and I forget the season, but it's about secret space program something like that secret space programs or the moon um but there's a yeah it was a really excellent episode on secret space program so i would say that right, we're gonna need you to look it up and share next wednesday the best I can't one remember the title yeah i can't remember the title i'll have to look it up but yeah basically just there's about 60 or 70 of them with me in it uh go watch those 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 are the best so Bert, the back black plague was caused by cat haters. No cats, rats, and mice everywhere. See, I'm going to run with that because ancient aliens, they say that aliens came down and they were spraying a fog and mist of it. And uh, that's why we all got sick. Um, and they were wearing these long black whatever, and the sky was a uh, fogger as they got everybody sick. So, I mean, that's what they said in ancient aliens. Where's our after party going to be? Well, if she's referring to after the RV party, I'm, Jen and I are planning a big shindig here in Las Vegas where I live. That's why we're doing it here. I'm just hoping yeah. to get an invite. Well, oh, cool, of course. We'll get, a, we'll get a DJ and we'll have some bands playing and we'll have a great time. So, Captain Crunch was murdered by a serial killer. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. I couldn't resist. Oh, my God. That's awful. I couldn't resist. I saw it and I had to click. Oh, All right, that's a that's a great spot to end it with, right there. Oh, a I, slow clap. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. No, I think that was great. I like somebody else mentioned we should do the after party in Puerto Rico. Sean did. I, I'm I'm down. I think we should have multiple after parties. All right, good plan. All right, guys, mods, thank you for sticking around so late. Thank you, everybody. All right, dead cat. We'll see you next Wednesday. Good night, everybody.